Matt Harmon here of Reception Perception. we got a big topic to talk about today. So, your favorite college receiver prospect doesn't get separation. What does that mean, and how does it apply to a specific prospect in this year's class, Keon Coleman? Let's get into it. All right, we got a lot to get into today. I'm going to be throwing a lot of numbers at you. We're going to be remembering some dudes, a lot of names from way back before in this video, but I promise that you are going to find this information super interesting. Everything that I'm referencing today comes from receptionperception.com. Of course, if you're not familiar with Reception Perception, appreciate you being here. It's the website that I run. It's the series that I created back in 2014 to evaluate wide receiver play independent of quarterback play, other variables. I go in and I chart the film, watch eight games for college players, NFL players, and chart those routes that they run. And the main thing is obviously getting open. It's separation. So this time of year, we often end up hearing about a prospect that, hey, in college, he doesn't get open, right? He, he doesn't get separation but what do we do with that from a pro projection standpoint? Now, there's sometimes the narrative doesn't match the film. To me, if you're familiar with my content, you know that I don't believe that with Roma Dunze, a guy that, that gets thrown around a lot. Ah, he doesn't get separation. That That's not real. That is not backed up by what's on film. Uh, we have a video on the channel with Roma Dunze breaking that down, uh, his whole profile getting into it with James Coe from the podcast. You can also find Roma Dunze's full green route chart and full reception perception profile on the site, but there is a prospect, Keon Coleman, in this year's draft class that I did find when charting the film struggles against man and press coverage specifically. So that actually forced me to dive into reception perception data and look back at the full history of the players that I've charted, the 2016, 17, and 18 draft classes, and then the past four years draft class to try to find what happens to these receivers that don't beat coverage in college what's the trend and how can they find future success and shout out to jp bennett in the rp discord who is the one who got my gears turning on this so what i did is i went in over all of the players sampled and tried to find the guys who were below the 35th percentile in man zone and press coverage success rate and this list that i compiled all of these guys were below the 35th percentile in two of those three metrics, success rate versus man, zone, and press. Here's the table here. Like I said, I'm going to be doing a lot of names, a lot of stats at you, and we're going to talk about these players. But the overall take here, 32 players met this qualification. They're below the 35th percentile in at least two of the three man, zone, and press coverage success rates. To me, now this is subjective. You can push back on this. And nine of these guys have had moments in the league that's 28 percent of the sample five of them only five of them have had five true like truly inarguable hits to me that's 15.6 percent of them and all of them are big slot receivers so let's go over the full list here and, and again we are remembering some dudes we've got Aaron Burbage Amara Darbo I'm on Ross St. Brown Adarius Stewart our Darius Stewart, Sharon Peak, Christian Watson, Cooper Cup, DJ Chark, Danny Gray, Dante Pettis, David Bell, Darunya Wilson, DD Westbrook, Demarcus Robinson, Jonathan Mingo, Jordan Lasley, Josh Malone, Juju Smith Schuster, Kadarius Tony, Pharaoh Cooper, Rasheed Rice, Roger Lewis, Rondale Moore, Tajay Spears, Traylon Burks, Tyler Boyd, Wandale Robinson, Will Fuller, Xavier Hutchinson, Kayshawn Booty. Charlie Jones, and finally, Rakeem Jarrett. Now, all of these players I've sorted into categories between, you know, guys, I, look, I'm saying bad. Obviously, they just did, they never had really, they, they never really even really had a moment in the league, right? Like the Aaron Burbage, Jamar Darbo, those, those guys never really did anything. Sharon Peak never really did anything. Um, there are some guys like, hey, Dante Pettis is a depth player. Uh, David Bell is a depth player. You know, D.D. Westbrook, like, again, you had a couple moments in the league, but whatever. Demarcus Robinson is depth. Right. Um, but for the most part, the actual guys that have done things on this list, we're looking at Amon Ross St. Brown, big slot receiver, Christian Watson, volatile deep threat, uh, Cooper Cup, big slot receiver, DJ Chark. Like he's DJ Chark a hit, had a thousand yard season, but I would consider him again a volatile deep threat receiver. Juju Smith Schuster, I think that's a hit. 
big slot receiver. Now we've got some fake wide receivers here. Canaris, Tony, Rondell Moore. Those those guys don't run real routes. They're they're not really playing wide receiver. Um, so you could definitely throw Canaris Tony into bad, but Rondell Moore, he's 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 a fake receiver. Back to the big slot receivers, Rasheed Rice was a guy who did not get separation in college. He was below the 35th percentile in the games I sampled from last year against man zone and press coverage. But he found success being a big slot receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs. Tyler Boyd, another guy that, to, to me, in reception perception, didn't get a lot of separation in college, below the 35th percentile in all three major coverage metrics, but ended up being a nice big slot receiver, 6'2", two, two, over 200 pounds for the uh, Cincinnati Bengals, currently a free agent right now. Wondell Robinson, I'm like, you know, he's, he's probably considered depth, but there are some real Wondell Robinson bros out there in the fantasy space, so even just putting him on here, he's the slot receiver. And finally, the other guy that I had a green category here, like he's had some moments in the league, it's Will Fuller, another volatile deep threat. So the guys who, to me, on this list, have had sustained actual multiple years of success in the NFL. We're talking about Tyler Boyd. We're talking about Rasheed Rice, who only won year in the league, of course. Juju Smith-Schuster, Cooper Cup, and Amon Ross St. Brown. Those five guys have all gone on to be big slot receivers in the NFL. For the most part, like it's Amon Ross St. Brown playing outside at USC. Juju Smith-Schuster playing outside at USC. Um, Cooper Cup was was mostly a slot at Eastern Washington, but he was a good zone coverage beater. As you see on the chart, he was above uh, the 35th percentile in uh, success rate versus zone coverage, but struggled with man and press. And look, I know Cooper Cup's an elite receiver right now, but to start his career, he was almost like used in tight end-ish ways. So again, another big slot receiver, Rasheed Rice, didn't beat coverage as an X receiver at SMU. I asked him at the Super Bowl, like, hey, when did you know your role was going to completely change from what you did at SMU to now, and he said as soon as the Chiefs drafted me, that was the the, the plan that Coach Reed laid out for him. And and, and that's the, the tough part about evaluating college prospects is you they could be used in one role at the college level, and then a completely different vision is in store for them for, with their NFL coaches. That's what we saw with Rasheed Rice. And then again, finally, last like kind of big slot receiver was Tyler Boyd. Didn't really get open as an outside receiver at Pitt did transition well to that slot receiver role. So, look, this is an interesting thing here because I think this really applies to a prospect like Keon Coleman. And, and we'll get into Coleman's profile now. We'll pull up his profile on receptionperception.com and why, yeah, there are clear paths to him being a productive player despite all the red you see on that route tree here. Despite the fact that, yeah, we're looking at a player who was 20th percentile success rate versus man coverage, 19th percentile success rate versus press coverage. To me, when I watch Keon Coleman line up outside, there are there are there are questions. There are concerns about the separation error. Now to be fair to Keon Coleman, 80.2% success rate versus zone coverage is a good mark. That's above the 50th percentile. That's actually better than guys like Amon Ross St. Brown. That's actually better than guys like Cooper Cup in their collegiate reception perception sample, or even Ginger Smith-Schuster. Actually, honestly, I, I think if you look back at the historical data, that's better than all of those uh, big slot receivers that have hit in terms of the guys that we were looking at from that list. So that's a pretty good mark for Keon Coleman. Like, I don't, again, despite all the red on the route chart, and, and man, I'm going to tell you over and over again, don't just focus on that color. Focus on more than that. Despite all the red on that route chart there, there are plays against zone coverage where I think Keon Coleman shows an ability to know where to be at the right time, especially on specific routes. Like you look at the route chart, the two routes that he's at the collegiate average is the dig route and the curl route. Those are critical slot receiver routes. If you're going to work the middle of the field, you're going to sit down against zone coverage on a curl route. You've got to be able to do that stuff. I think Keon Coleman shows an ability to do that. Even his slant route, which is red here, 77.3%, that's just, that's just out of the range of being an average or even slightly above average score. Like, if he had gotten open on two more routes, he might his route chart color might be different there. So, 
what I'm saying by all this is that I think when you see Keon Coleman, who in his reception perception sample did line up outside on 77.7% of his sample snaps, and you see him do a little bit of flank or you see him do a little bit of, of X receiver stuff, but 50, uh, just over 58% routes lined up off the line of scrimmage. So again, think about that off ball receiver there, sometimes in the slot, sometimes outside. That's where I think you see, think you see him run really good in breaking routes. So those slants, those crossing routes, the dig routes specifically against zone coverage. To me, Keon Coleman shows the ability to go from an outside receiver and move him into that power slot position. A couple other things that stand out here. The guy obviously has good hands. In traffic especially, he's a reliable guy. Now, I think he sometimes gets himself into contested situations too much or is too comfortable combating in those contested situations, but at the same time, not good quarterback play last year at FSU. I mean, consistently erratic quarterback play at FSU. So to me, that's definitely something you have to kind of consider when looking at his contested catch rate overall. I think he's got good hands. I think he rumbles well after the catch. To me, yeah, you see the profile for him here. It looks a lot like Rasheed Rice, better than Rasheed Rice last year, but a guy that was lining up mostly outside and... Now, he's not running the same vertical routes that Rasheed Rice was running at SMU, but look, we all freaked out about Rasheed Rice's reception perception results last year, and rightfully so. Like, the position he was playing in college was not going to transition to the pros, but the position he ended up playing in the NFL, it ended up working out there with the Kansas City Chiefs. That was a good vision by a good coaching staff, but that brings me to kind of my final point here. While we have clear history of this working out, these guys who go from outside receivers who don't separate against man and press coverage specifically, or even some of these guys' zone coverage is outside receivers, we have a history of seeing that work out, right? Again, 32 players, five inarguable hits, all of them are slot receivers. All of them are big slot receivers for the most part. Guys that are, you know, over the typical 190, 5'11 slot receiver profile. Keon Coleman would certainly fit into that he's bigger actually than all of these guys so we have the profile of that working um on the same token though some of the risks here you look at guys like Traylon Burks you look at guys like Jonathan Mingo who are in our player sample I consistently said about both of those guys in the draft process that if they were going to hit they would have to move into the power slot role they would have to be big slot receivers like I liked Jonathan Mingo in that role you know what I didn't like him doing? What he was doing with the Carolina Panthers last year as a pure outside receiver. You know, I thought that he would be best actually playing the role that Adam Thielen played for the 2023 Carolina Panthers. Well, you got Thielen in that spot. He's being productive. Mingo's not going to win outside. Boom, you're banged. Look at Traylon Burks. You, got, you look at his reception perception profile. I actually had a I mean, terrible scores against man and press coverage, which is kind of what I raised the alarm bell about. But he had a really nice over 80% success rate versus zone coverage. His prospect profile looks very similar to Keon Coleman. I said he could have thrived in a Juju Smith-Schuster type of big slot receiver role. You know who disagreed with me? The Tennessee Titans, who took Traylon Burks in the first round. Who took him in the first round and put him in A.J. Brown's vacated X receiver role. There was nothing on film that would lead you to believe that was going to work with Traylon Burks, in my opinion. So that's the risk of this profile, is that while we can see, based on reception perception data, that there's a path forward for these non-separation college receivers, these guys that don't get open, it doesn't mean you're you're just not going to work in a league, but it's going to take the right coaching staff to turn you into that big slot receiver, or... You're going to need to be a volatile deep threat like a Christian Wat- uh, Christian Watson or, uh, you know, I mean, shoot, even some of these guys like D.D. Westbrook. I guess he had moments, right? Like the volatile deep threat or, or yeah, the, the the Will Fuller archetype, the D.J. Chark archetype. You're going to have to be that like non-separation, pure vertical receiver on the outside. I don't know that Keon Coleman fits into that. To me, he fits into more of that like Burks and Mingo bucket of players if they're going to be on the outside. They, and that's not really what, what you're looking for. And then this is the funny part, not to go on a rant here, but this is the funny part about like prospecting and 
oh, trying to pat yourself on the back about being right. You know, uh, you were lower than consensus on Traylon Burks. Good call. I mean, bro, who cares? Because let me tell you what, uh, if I was lower than consensus on Traylon Burks, he ended up going to a team where they played him in the slot and he caught, you know, 80 passes, people would probably be giving me shit and telling I'm an idiot for not liking Traylon Burks. Even though, even though I said that he could thrive in that role. That it, I just want to encourage you as reception perception viewers and hopefully subscribers, that this stuff is not all binary. Like, don't look at Keon Coleman's route chart and just say, he's bad. He can't play, okay? He's not a good route runner because that's not true. He actually shows signs of being a good route runner against zone coverage, and a smart NFL coach can see that even if it's not what he's doing on film. That's the type of path you have to be hoping for and hoping he doesn't land with a staff that is narrow in their view of wide receivers and sees, oh, big guy, let's throw him out at X receiver because then you get Jonathan Mingo. Then you get Traylon Burks. And there's ways to get around that archetype, but to me, it's just it's very, very narrow. It's a thin margin for error type of outlook. So all told, yeah, Keon Coleman has some concerning reception perception marks in terms of his ability to beat man and press coverage. But based on RP history, there is a path forward to that archetype succeeding in the NFL if they can get with the right coach and the right environment and find that role as a power slot receiver. All right, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, appreciate you guys watching this video. I know this is kind of, it's a its a nerdy subject, right? Like we're talking about percentiles. We're looking back at prospect profiles like Jordan Lasley and Josh Malone. Okay, uh, so I appreciate you guys sticking with me on this one. But look, I'm very passionate about the idea that things are not all binary. So thanks for watching the video. Appreciate you guys. If you could like and subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. There's more reception perception content out there on the internet than ever. I mean, subscribe to the website, the podcast. We've got a ton of draft coverage coverage coming up. We're going to put more videos here on YouTube, but all the profiles are on the site, man. Top three guys. We got more profiles coming every single week. So get a subscription, receptionperception.com. Until next time, I'll see you.